Hello, welcome to the video about the bridge tool. So this tool is basically that you would draw a curve and we will spawn certain models on the curve. Now to start with, we of course need the curve, so it's going to type in geometry layer. In the geometry in layer, we're going to just type in curve and we're going to use the polygon curve. So using the polygon curve will be, uh, for each click, we will spawn one segment. So we will go to our handle here. I will also go into my top view of my Houdini here, and I will just simply draw a simple uh, curve. So make sure in terms of ranging, let's roughly keep it in like one to two units range uh, and draw something, I guess, that looks like this and press enter when you're done. And this is what we're going to use then as a base layer once you have drawn that curve. Now, for our tool, um, what we will do is we will often need to loop over the curve segments or the curve uh, chunks. And by default, the curve here is like called one big primitive. So you can see that we only have one primitive. So it can also view it here. We have only one uh, primitive. Um, so a trick here is to convert line this. So this will break up into multiple segments. So here, if we now view the amount of primitives, we have three. So that means that each line between the points is now its individual primitive. So we can spawn a model for each of these line segments now by just looping over it. So this means that I can, for example, do a for each loop with called a primitive. So for each primitive, which is in this case three. And now we can here see our first segment. And what we will do is we, for example, can do a sweep and we will create multiple lines on top of this line so we can do that by a sweep for example we're going to set this to ribbon and in this mode um, we can make this a bit bigger or smaller as well uh, but uh, we probably want to use the the type here and set this to uh, the columns here so now we have multiple lines uh, spawned from that one line so often i don't want to have too many lines like three is usually what i would go for um, and also to be sure that we are uh, moving in the right direction, I often force this in the y-axis here as up vector. This is roughly how we can start building these lines. Now, if we now loop this for each one of them, you can see that we're now building something like this. Uh, so this is then the base bridge shaping. Now, I do want to add some randomization in these lines, and there are a few ways of doing it. Uh, we can, for example, just simply do a mountain noise and hopefully if we play around with some settings and maybe disable the normal, you can see we can disturb these uh, shapes here. So maybe we don't want to disturb in the y-axis and disturb it like so. So this is one way of maybe adding some variations uh, in it. There are definitely other ways and you can also here just play around with this until we are happy. Um, but for now, let's maybe keep it like so. I think the variation is interesting enough to keep going on it. Uh, and in a later video, I will also talk a bit about uh, joining these points a little bit better together uh, by just uh, clamping and recasting them. What we can do as well is use the lapse random deletion. Uh, so basically, for each line that we have now, we will spawn a 3D model on the line. But let's say we want to randomly delete some of them. We can use the random deletion node to, for example, switch this to primitives and then have randomly parts here, for example, deleted or not used. So this could be handy, um, like so. So by default, let's say I leave it to zero, uh, but in case you want to delete randomly, you can then here adjust this. So we will do now in another loop that we did before. So we can do for each primitive again, basically. So for each uh, primitive that we have. So in total, of course, we have nine primitives, of course, because we, for each line, we added three more lines. And there are a few things that we want to do for each line. So you can see we only have like two points. Um, so I do want to make a system where I sort of like modify the line to not be this perfectly uh, straight. So I do want to then resample this line into multiple points. From here, I want to get the middle point. To get the middle point, I will go into a bit more vexed way to do it. Um, I will basically get a target middle point by fusing the original line together. So if we go to fuse and we set this very high, we might want to here disable the setting here. We have now one single point and this is roughly uh, the middle of the line basically. 
So I have a reference point what the middle is and now I just need to understand how I can grab it automatically from here which can be done by wrangle or a little bit of code. So what we can do is we can just here uh, plug it in like so and we're going to use a function called the nearest point. So this function is very useful and I use it very often. Uh, so we can just type in middle and here we're just going to use the near point function. For this to work, it needs to understand what geometry to look at, which will be number one, which is here in this case, the second input. So it goes from zero, one, two, three. Um, so this is zero, so we need one. So looking at our curve, our resampled curve, and we basically want to say, look based on the position of my current data, which is the fuse. So with this single line of code, we now extracted here the number of points that is the closest. So point number nine, if I enable my uh, point view here, Point number nine is currently the closest to the middle. So even if I would resample at a different rate, uh, this will automatically here now scale to, for example, point number three. Uh, so this was a little automated way to get the closest middle point here. And we can now use a group node. I will just here use a group. And in this group, I just gonna call this middle. Now, the only thing that I would like to do is, of course, fill in here that number. So make sure it's also point group. And for example, in this case, nine was our point that we want to select. So we need to find a way to link this data with this node. And an easy way to do this is by using a spare input. So here, select spare input. And all the way at the bottom, we have now a slot where we can drag and drop another node. And now these nodes are sort of like linked, as you can see. So they have an internal link between each other. Now we can type in a little bit of code. So I would like to get the point data from that node, which is called minus one, which is referencing to the internal link, the spare input. And we would like to get the data from point zero. And the name of the data is of course called uh, middle. And then we're gonna close it off by index zero and then close it like that. So you can see now we are automatically selecting point number nine. So make sure you're typing this correctly so we're grabbing point data from another node which can be very useful to do in many situations another group that i want to make is uh, by using the group range node is the ends because if i start to move points around i do want to make sure the point the ending points are always the same so i'm going to call this ends i'm going to switch these two points and here we're going to just enable starting one and end one so you can see that the and then the starts are removed and we're going to invert this so only now point zero and 17 are in this group so in case i want to make sure we are not deforming the shape too much uh, we can use this because what i will do now is i will use actually a soft uh, transform and in this soft transform i can for example move things up or down but i can use my group that we made called the middle and if I now move things up or down, you can see we have this soft transform uh, because this sort of works with a blurring radius or a radius to influence. So I can see the radius here. And this could be useful to then control a bit better how you want them to behave. We can also have different methods of blending. So if you just want it to be linear, you have something like this. Or if you want to have something else, you can have it like this. So I don't want to exaggerate the blending or the amount too much. I do like it when... For example, it looks a bit like this. Maybe this is a bit too much. Let's go to 0 0.4. So there is just a little bit of hanging down the shape. So in case the soft radius would be very high, uh, you can see that we are deforming the shape too much. So to bring back the shape, so I'm going to maybe exaggerate by setting the scale very high. I do want to use the end groups now to retarget or to recover that data and again i will use a slightly wrangle way of doing this so i'm going to plug in here my data and i'm going to plug in the previous data based on that uh, not deformed shape yet so what i will do is that i will say that specifically the end uh, points group will now be uh, changed so all the points or the positions of end groups are equal to the position from the first input so uh, of the second input which will be one and then we're going to just say get the position of the point number like so 
And now you can see that we are just restoring those uh, sides here. We do probably want to apply a smoothing. So here we have smooth. And you can see we're just smoothing that in and out a bit. So this way we can here control that a bit better. So again, uh, usually I don't want to exaggerate this distance too much, but in case it would, uh, you can here do it like so. So it's not that aggressive. Now that we have our line, I want to deform a geometry along the curve and I will use the node called path deform. And we need a geometry. I will use my pick head for now and I will make a better model in a moment. So what you can see is that this will deform your shape, the pick head along that line. And we probably want to then change a few settings. Um, so what if the picket was smaller? I'm going to just simply place a scaling here. You do see that our line, of course, is longer. And we can actually force uh, this geometry to be stretched along its shape. We're going to use here the length instead of to curve length. And now it's basically stretched. So if I make a very nice 3D model of something that looks like a rock type shape, I will nicely then scatter it uh, along that way. Now to save a little bit of time, I have already prepared a shape like so. So this is roughly a shape that I want to use and scatter on the line. I will quickly go over the process how I made this, but definitely feel free to, for example, build or load something that is maybe even better. Uh, you can always import FBX files by using the file node. Uh, but if you want to do it in Houdini, I like to use Platonic shapes for rock. Uh, shapes so this is a planktonic shape and what i did is i basically stretched one edge of the platonic shape so i grabbed one single point in this case for example you can see it i grabbed point number eight and i stretched it with this soft transform uh, into like this weird uh, rock shape as you can see like it becomes a bit more spiky so from there i uh, rotate this and scale this a bit down so it's not that uh, chunky so i uh, scaled it down and from here, you can see some of these settings that I've used. And then from here, I do a duplication or I copy the shape twice, uh, just so I have a bit more variation and multiple sharp edges. That's often a bit nicer. And I'm going to merge them with each other. So I'm going to basically copy paste another version to make uh, sort of something like this. So this is the shape that I want for the bridge. So we have a bit smaller in the middle and a bit more bigger chunks at the end here. This is roughly the, the shape that I want. Uh, and then I scaled it or I centered it in my world. If I view my grid, so we have it nicely here in our world. And I can also here, uh, in case, uh, because we're going to deform along a curve, I do want to maybe here add supporting edges. So we can disable the convex option and enable the breaker option. This will help us to create these additional divisions on the geometry because we will deform this with this node and it might be useful to add a bit more supporting geometry. Now, this is the one shape that I've made. So just something that looks a bit like this, something that feels a bit more rock. Another shape that I want is also simply here a simple line. And I'm going to just do a sweep. And in the sweep node itself, we can here enable the uh, long scale, long curve. So we can have a few settings here, like adding some more divisions, some bigger radiuses, but we do want to here, for example, use this to control, to make these edges or to make the ends bigger so they stick out more. And I do a little bit of smoothing afterwards, so it does help with these parts to be a bit better. Um, and I also target this as the group main, which I will talk about in later stages. After that is done, I just merge those two shapes together. Of course, this doesn't look perfect. Uh, we will do some more changes in the future. But basically, this is the base shape that I want, something that's not too high poly, something that roughly has the shapes that I want. And I'm also here uh, can scale this in the right location if I want to. So if I have a, if I have a shape like this, I can now plug it in my uh, here, my path deform. And then you can have something, as you can see, like this. So it deforms itself along the line with this node. Um, important to know is that the rotation will matter. So if I here, I had to rotate my model 90 degrees. If I don't do this, uh, your model could look like this. And you might be thinking what's going wrong. And sometimes in this case, it was just the rotation that was not on the right axis. 
Also, the scale will be important as well. So if I have a big model or small model, you can see that the scaling of this will also be quite important. So if you want something more smaller, you're going to have to change the scale like this. So after we have done this and we roughly have an understandable, interesting shape, we can upload this as, as our output and we do this then for each of these lines. And now we have something that looks like the bridges or it starts to look like the bridges tool.